This right here captures the story of American chestnut. All right. Can you wrap your arms around there? No. There'll often be a dead one. There might even be another dead one laying on the ground. Then there might be some new ones, maybe one partially sick. I'll show you one over there in a second. All our big American chestnuts died by around 1940-ishes. All up and down the Appalachian Mountains, millions upon millions and millions of trees died from the American chestnut blight. Uh, well, actually, it's an Asian chestnut blight, killing the American chestnut. That there was no resistance to it. Some Asian, they believe, Asian trees, like Chinese, could have been Japanese, the first light started showing up in the New York Botanical Garden, New York City. Why? That's where trees were coming in, a big port. Emerald ash borer, the same thing happened. It was in the Great Lakes, it was a port. And they believe that came in in packing material. So they believe some Chinese chestnut or Japanese, no one will ever know, brought it in. Those trees are resistant to it. Okay? So it was like a disease never experienced before. And it, in about three and a half decades, spread the entire range of the Appalachians, killed all the big trees. Now they continue to re-sprout out of their roots. So it, this tells you right here, right at this spot, there was a big American chestnut, like in 1920, 1930. Maybe even 1940, it might have been dying. And now it's re-sprouting. They only get so big, then they get the blight again, and they die. And the blight is a fungus that infects the cambium and the flowing zone. So as soon as the bark starts splitting open, which they do when they get big, that lets the spore land on there, and it gets in. But they're not extinct. Sometimes, like at high school, junior high, you learn the chestnut's extinct. They're not. Because here is one. The twigs on American chestnut and buds are all very glabrous. What does that mean? Shiny, waxy, smooth. And the buds are fairly brightly colored. They're orangish brown. This is a great time of year to teach it. The buds are the color of the leaves on the forest floor. Orange brown. All glabrous. Why am I stressing that? What did chinkapin have? Fuzz to where it looked dusty. Dusty fuzz on the leaf underside and all down on the twig and buds. So it looked like it grew on the side of a dirt road covered with dusty fuzz. Nothing on this. Very, very waxy, polished, very brightly colored. But other, but other than that, a chestnut like twig and bud. The leaf, uh, we can find some in the ground, it'll probably be better over there. Uh, well, here's one. They're a very long, lance-shaped leaf, real long, like a real spear, with very, very strong teeth. No fuzz anywhere on the leaf. The fruit on American chestnut looks basically the same as Chinese. There's some real subtle differences, but for the most part, you really couldn't tell it apart. The big fur, and they will occasionally, it's not rare, but not common, They'll get big enough to have fruit. They could get like up to maybe six inches, and they're maybe starting to suffer from the blight but staying alive, and they'll flower and get some fruit. Many times the fruit is sterile because they self-pollinated. In some places, the majority of the trees would have been American chestnuts, been like 80%. And on average, it was probably 30 or 40 percent American chestnuts, the whole forest. People were literally freaking out when it was alive. Because uh, mountain people in the mountains here, they, they ate them. They collected them and sold them in cities. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, the cooking song. That's American chestnut, not Asian. Oops. All filled in, wildlife adapted and figured it out. And I'm not saying it wouldn't be better with it, I'm just saying it's a pretty resilient system. And there's a buffer. Okay, so uh, we lost something that was literally a major component and had, had nuts every 
year. They never really had a crop failure because they flower in June. There's no frosts in there. And uh, it's always free. <laughs> We're probably, you guys will probably see American chestnut back in the woods because they have the hybrid. They, they, have you heard about the hybrid chestnuts? No, they are replanting those. They also are studying called hypovirulence of the fungus. Uh, the fungus actually gets, the disease gets sick with the disease. The fungus catches a virus. And the virus makes the fungus not as virulent, and the tree can heal itself. In fact, I'm keeping my eye on this tree because I've been saying it's going to be dead for five years and it keeps healing the plant. And I'm wondering if the fungus on this tree, right on the, just on this one, went hypervirulent. Uh, in Europe, Europe got infected with the chestnut blight too, and it started killing all the trees. But then researchers noticed they started healing and they found that the fungus got infected with this virus. They brought that to the U.S. and they inoculated trees with it, but it hasn't, it won't jump from tree to tree. Really complex genetics. But they, they can put it on one tree and it will start healing, but it won't spread to the next.